Reimagining Success, episode 34. You're listening to Reimagining Success, the podcast where we help you reimagine your future, designing a life and career beyond the nine to five that allows you the freedom, flexibility, and fulfillment that you've been dreaming of. I'm your host, Anna Lundberg. Now let's get started on those dreams. Okay, so we've started to look at why you should quit your corporate job and why at least most of you are never going to. If you missed those two episodes, then be sure to pop back over and check those out before you continue. Um, But if you have been listening to those, then uh, let's continue with this train of thought because the reason why I believe or I know that a lot of you or maybe not you who's listening, but a lot of you being the world out there, a lot of you are not going to quit your corporate job, is in my experience almost always fear. There's this really strong fear of failure, and in some cases actually the fear of success. The fear of success might sound really strange, it might be counterintuitive, but just think about it this way. Succeeding at leaving your job, starting your own business, and changing the way you work and live is going to involve a massive upheaval, both for you and for the people around you, for your friends, for your family, for your colleagues, and so on. So I hope you can see that the fear of success could actually also be holding you back. But we're not going to talk about that today. That's a whole other topic. We're going to be looking at the fear of failure, which I think needs no explanation and will likely be very familiar to you. So let's look at that fear of failure and break it down. Now, what do we actually mean when we say we are afraid of failing? Well, in the context of leaving a job, failing might mean making the wrong choice and ruining your future career prospects not getting enough clients in that new business that you're setting up and therefore not making enough money and having to crawl back to a normal corporate nine to five job. Now, these all feel pretty absolute and permanent. And we do tend to think in those very black and white terms. They're also made worse, these different elements of failing, because the failure feels very public. We're especially afraid of other people seeing us make those mistakes, judging us as being arrogant and foolish because we're trying to pursue our dreams and believe somehow that we're better than others. But let's break these down, as I said, and look at each of these fears in turn. So first of all, that fear of making the wrong choice. Now, what on earth is the wrong choice? Is there really one right choice out there? And if there is, who decides what that choice is? And even if you do make the so-called wrong choice, if it exists, does that really mean that you're stuck with that choice forever and ever? Does it mean that you will never again be able to make a different choice? And does it really mean that you've completely and forever ruined your CV and drawn a red line through all of that past experience, the skills that you've accumulated and the personal brand that you've built and reputation that you've earned? Now, if those rhetorical questions aren't clear enough for you, then let me spell it out for you. There really isn't any wrong choice. There are just different choices that will have different consequences. And on top, the good news is that you get to decide what the right choice is because you are deciding what success means to you, what your goals are and what it will take to achieve them. Also, even if you do make a choice that feels wrong to you, so that's something that perhaps doesn't achieve what you hoped it would achieve or that doesn't feel meaningful to you once you do achieve it, then you actually still have the option to adjust your plan or to revise it completely. So if and when you do that, you're not going to be starting from scratch even because first, you will still have all of your previous years of experience in that corporate to fall back on. And second, this more recent entrepreneurial experience is actually going to have brought you new skills, knowledge and contacts that will not only have contributed to your personal development and satisfaction, but also inevitably will have contributed really positively to your external brand and reputation. There are actually a number of people in my book, Leaving the Corporate 9 to 5, who chose to leave their job to pursue an alternative path and then actually return to a full-time job. And they don't see that as moving backwards. Nobody regrets having having taken that time off. And in fact, that experience, even though they have to some extent gone back, returned to maybe a corporate environment, that experience has only made their CV richer. And employers have always been interested in hearing about that time spent off the beaten path, more so than all of their other more relevant, arguably, experience in the corporate world. So that's for the fear of making the wrong choice. Now, the fear of not making enough money you know, this is really the fear of failing in the business itself. So um, not getting enough clients, for example, and therefore not earning enough money. Now, the problem here is that most people haven't defined what enough looks like. 
So that's either in terms of number of clients that you need, number of projects, or in terms of income, you know, the amount of money you need per month, per year, and so on. And they also haven't set themselves a deadline when it comes to time in which they want to and need to achieve those goals. Goals. So, you know, in order to cover your expenses, you need to have made X amount by this date, for example. Now, most people are ironically both pessimistic and optimistic. Now, they're overly pessimistic when they're starting out because they worry about not making enough money. That's what we're talking about here, the fear of not making enough. But they're also overly optimistic and unrealistic because they expect that the clients and money are going to just start flooding in. So the reality, of course, is always somewhere in between and it's much more nuanced. Because once you have defined clear and specific goals, it is absolutely possible to develop a business model and learn techniques, including, of course, marketing and sales and so on, that will help you achieve those income goals and number of clients and so on. It's just that it will take time and hard work. And unfortunately, for whatever reason, a lot of people just aren't willing to work that hard and won't have the patience to wait for those results to come. Now, there is also a more practical and real issue here. You really do need to make enough money and make it within a certain amount of time in order to be able to cover your expenses. So those expenses, of course, are both your personal expenses, paying your rent, your mortgage and so on, and your professional expenses, so all your business costs. And that could be everything from website hosting to graphic design, and maybe a book cover, hosting for your podcast, email marketing, Facebook ads, tax and so on, of course, and accountant and, and admin support. Now, the solution is the same, um, whatever the case. Working out how much you need giving yourself a limited time frame, and then making sure that you have a plan in place and get the help you need to reach those specific goals within that time. Sounds simple, right? And of course it's not. It does take hard work and time, as I said, but really that is in a nutshell what you need to do. You need to work out how much you need, how much is enough, give yourself a time limit, and then work out how you're going to get there. Now, this might mean, for example starting your business as a so-called side hustle alongside a full-time job because that helps you ensure that you still have that stable income while you test the waters of your business idea. The risk is if you jump ship completely, you have the pressure, which is great, and the inspiration and the time, most of all, to pursue your new business full-time, um, but you may not yet have a really robust idea, you haven't built your audience and so on, and then you quickly run out of time and money. So it might mean building your business as a side hustle. It might mean joining a course or a program or perhaps working with a business coach to really learn the skills and get the guidance that you need in order to fast track your personal business development. So to sort of skip over all those mistakes that a lot of us have made and to get there much faster. And it might mean defining a milestone when you're actually going to decide that maybe this isn't working and it's time to tweak, to pivot or to scrap the plan altogether. So it's perfectly fine to say, you know, I'm going to give myself six months to explore this idea or even a year or less probably at least six months because you know it takes time for you to be able to especially if you're doing it alongside a full-time job to test an idea to build that audience to see how things are going see how much you enjoy that entrepreneurial life but it's totally possible to make a different choice later on to decide you know what this particular business idea isn't working or I'm not enjoying as much as I thought and that's absolutely fine so either to change idea to evolve it to choose a different client target or a different um, business model perhaps or in fact again to choose to go back to a full-time job and that's absolutely fine. So that was the fear of making the wrong choice, the fear of not making enough money, and then the fear of being judged, this really public nature of failure and what other people think about you. Now here it's really important to ask yourself, who are those other people? Are they people whose opinions matter to you? And if so, why do they matter? And more importantly than that actually, does their definition of success and therefore their definition of failure match your definition of success and failure? Because the thing is that we all have really different core values. You know, someone might value stability and security while you value freedom and independence and flexibility. We have different family situations. Um, someone has, you know, 10 children, a dog and a mortgage and so on, whereas you are free and single and, and can travel the world or vice versa. And we all have very different personal and professional goals. And um, so if I judge my success based on your definition of success, then I'm almost always going to fail according to that definition, because it's just different. So I've defined what's important to me, I've defined what meaningful success looks like to me, and I'm working towards that. 
And a lot of you will say, wow, that's incredible, really happy for you. And that's something I maybe um, want to emulate, at least not copy in any way. But, you know, I can see some patterns there that I, that really appeal to me. I aspire to that similar kind of flexibility and freedom. And that's really appealing to me. Whereas many people will also say, oh, my goodness, I can't believe she's doing that. That doesn't appeal to me at all. Why on earth is she doing that and not doing what I'm doing and so on? So, again, if you're judging your definition of success or if you're judging your success based on other people's definitions, then you're always going to fail. So bear in mind, you know, who are these people whose opinions you really care about and do you care? And then also try to understand their value system, their preferences and how they're judging you. Classic example is your parents. If they've grown up in sort of the baby boomer phase of valuing a a long-term full-time job, working hard until they're 65, getting that pension and so on, that's simply not a model that appeals to many of us and certainly isn't even possible or feasible these days. We're all going to have many careers over the decades that we're going to be working. We're probably going to work long time beyond 65 and we're not going to be able to just retire and get that automatic pension. So, um, you know, there's the generational divide, for example, and even within our generations, many big differences in our value systems and so on. Now, of course, it's very easy to say this and to tell you to ignore everything that everyone else thinks. But for most of us, our egos are going to be bruised and our confidence will falter when we see that other people are judging our choices and how we're doing. The good news here is that the more clarity you get on your definition of success, so the more clarity you get on really what you're trying to achieve, your vision, your goals, and you feel confident about the plan that you have to get there, you have all the help you need and so on, the more conviction you're going to have and therefore the stronger you will be in defending yourself against all those doubts coming from people around you, whether it's, again, friends or family, so loved ones, important people, or just strangers. Or actually, more to the point, the less you'll feel the need to defend yourself because you'll know you're doing what's important and you'll know why it's important to you. So you won't actually have to defend yourself anymore. You won't feel the need to justify it and make excuses and explain because you'll know that you're on the right path for you. So often I tend to recommend to people to sort of incubate their ideas at the beginning. Don't just go around willy-nilly telling everybody about every idea you have because people will start to think, hang on, she, he doesn't know what they're doing and maybe sort of take some time away incubate the idea, protect it, only tell people who you really trust and who know will support you. Um, And then once you've chosen an idea, once you really have a bit of a direction that you know you're moving towards that North Star, then you can perhaps begin to share with people, oh, this is what I'm working on. Um, And again, choosing very carefully which people you're actually going to tell. So you're not just going around telling people who may well judge you. So again, just to go back, we've looked at the fear of failure. Um, If I haven't covered something that you feel is really important, I'd love to hear from you. So as ever, get in touch at podcast at onestepoutside.com. Fully anonymously confidential is absolutely fine. I'd be happy to pick up on any other aspects of this that are concerned for you. So again, podcast at onestepoutside.com. But just breaking down some of the aspects, again, a recap of today, we looked at making the wrong choice. And again, there is no wrong choice. And the good news is that you get to decide what that wrong choice is, if so. You're not going to ruin your future career prospects because there's never a permanent black and white um, choice that you've made. You can always go back and it's not even really going back. It's just sort of pivoting, moving in a slightly different direction, shifting. And then in terms of business failure, not getting enough clients, not making enough money there, it's really important to define what enough is. So how much money do you need? What is your business plan? How many clients do you need? And then you have those goals and you can put in place a plan and get the support you need to achieve those goals. And then having to crawl back to the normal corporate nine to five job. And first of all, it's not um, a bad thing if you do choose to do that. And secondly, it's certainly not necessary. In fact, I think the strongest sign of success in running your own business and this whole escape from the nine to five is persistence. So actually, if you're one of the few who stick with it, despite, you know, perhaps your ego being bruised, things not quite working out as quickly as well as you thought they would right away, if you're one of the few who actually sticks with it, you are going to be one of the few who succeeds to make this into really a sustainable um, long-term lifestyle and career for yourself. So again, making the wrong choice, not getting enough clients, making not making enough money, and then having to go back to return to what you're doing before. 
So again, I'd love to hear from you if you have any other aspects, if you have any comments on what I've talked about today, as ever, podcast at onestepoutside.com. We're continuing on this theme over the coming weeks. We'll be exploring more of these fears and beliefs that can hold us back. I hinted at the fear of success there, which is an interesting one to explore as well. And of course, how you can begin to get that clarity and conviction that we talked about that's so important to help you with the confidence to move forwards. But I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Bit of a scary one on the fear of failure. But as I always say, scary tends to come along for the ride with exciting And it does involve getting out of your comfort zone here, really, to be able to challenge yourself and to change things up a bit. So it will be a little bit scary, but also, again, very exciting and incredibly rewarding and fulfilling. So thanks so much for listening. And I will see you back here next week. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to Reimagining Success with Anna Lundberg. If you're looking for support and encouragement as you begin to reimagine success in your life, then come on over and join us in the One Step Outside Facebook group. You'll find like-minded people who will cheer you on, as well as free training sessions and lots more. To join, visit onestepoutside.com forward slash community or just search for One Step Outside on Facebook. I'll see you over there.